yangam ne beye ne beye Yad ate now, my son and Ishle. This is now her grandma. And today, grandma decided rather than having us do this during the live, you know, you sent in a lot of questions. And oh my gosh, some of these questions are going to take like a lecture. I mean, it's going to be like a 10, 15 minute situation. And so um, I decided that. I'm going to do some of these really long questions so that I can give it more time and give it more value. Very first question that we had, this is uh, about Navajo pottery. And Ryan Green was the person, he says, I have a piece of Navajo pottery that I bought at a trading post here in Oklahoma. And then he said, where I live. I was wondering if you could go more in depth in the symbol on the symbolism and meaning behind the designs. Here is a picture of what uh, Ryan. There's actually another picture, and we're going to uh, give the you know the symbolism and all the things that are on those. But among Native American people, uh, the symbol symbolic imagery is extremely important and to the continuation of traditional beliefs. Now, archaeologists have demonstrated that the marks made on the pottery are very much like ancient wall paintings that have long outlasted their creators. And the Native American view all these things, living or inanimate, they possess a spirit what drives this language of symbols, the symbols of native representations and are represented by like sometimes animal symbols. And I don't know if you know what hatching is, but basically hatching is a different light and dark tonal value, okay? Now, I'm not a pottery major, but these are some of the things that you need to understand about uh, Native American, uh, uh, the earlier uh, Native American pottery that was made by hand. Also, the geometrical lines that may appear to, so, uh, to be solely like decorations, but often they represented abstract ideas. Now, hatching was also used to denote colors uh, a thousand years ago before colored clays and minerals were found that would properly, that would bind properly uh, to a pot while firing. Okay, here is the drawing that grandma made. And these are some of the Navajo symbols of, on usually put on pottery. You'll see them here and there. Here is the rain cloud, the snow cloud, the rabbit, the crane, the turkey, the rain. Here's a different type of rain. Here's the snow, the road runner, the deer, the bear, saddlebag, the butterfly. And these have definitions over here. This is a sun ray for constancy the sun for happiness, the rainbow clouds and rainbow and clouds for prosperity. This one is rain and for prosperity as well, as well as the squash blossom for courtship, a big mountain for abundance, the hogan, uh, hogan for home, and the arrow for hunting. Ryan, here's your picture. First of all, under the pottery designs is these horse hairs. Now these, when you fire them between 1300 and 1800 Fahrenheit, you can drop your, the hair, horse hair on here. That's why you get these little lines and look at all the lines there. It's all over. The designs are burned in and you can use your favorite horse, dog hair, even your own hair, because that's exactly how the, uh, it occurred in a long time ago when a woman 
was brushing her hair, I guess, and was firing her pottery, her hair fell on this. And that's kind of how uh, people learn the designs. Now, these are the horizontal lines. I'm just going to say that right now. These are all horizontal lines. And these are clouds. Now, they're step, uh, they're step lines. They're curved triangular funnels. They represent the rain and lightning. And basically, the representation is for never ceasing prayers for rain. Then you come down here to the eagle feathers. These are symbols of honor and creative forces. Um, if they're put on arrows and prayer sticks, they're basically used for ceremonial purposes. Then again, you have the horizontal line. Uh, you have the clouds, again, for the same thing, for lightning and uh, rain, fertile, land, fertile lands. And then you have uh, the water, uh, the waves, and um, well, actually, you have the uh, here's the lightning and the clouds. Then you have the eagle feathers again for the same thing, um, symbols of honor and creative forces. And then you have water. This is the water. Water is life. Uh, they're line patterns and they're it's cl has cleansing power and represents life and death, uh, strength, change, healing, dreaming like unconditional love. And then you have basically the clouds uh, again and the water. So that is the, the first picture. Here is the next one. Again, you have the horse hair all through this. Notice it's everywhere underneath the design. Now, the clouds again, these are the stepped lines again. So all of this is re-explained. The clouds with the funnel clouds and things like that, representing uh, never ceasing prayers for rain. You have the eagle feathers for honor and creative forces. And uh, here you have the bear. Now, the bear is the guardian of the West. It's a spirit, spiritual guide. Now remember um, in the previous video, we had Hayala who saw the bear and he said, Grandma, was this a spiritual guide? Basically that is what it is. And so, and it's also uh, like a medicine, okay? It's believed this, this uh, bear, uh, the picture, is believed to have supernatural powers and healing powers. It's a symbol of deliberate action, introspection, soul searching, and insight. Then you have the arrow, okay? Here is an arrow, okay? And that's implying force movement. It's the force and the direction, okay? With power uh, on the bear, it represents the heart line and basically the pathway of breath or life force. With the arrow going forward, um, it's a prayer for better hunting. Okay, so this design right here, can you see it? And then the bear paw, here is the bear paw. And basically the bear tracks. It is a good omen when you see that. And it, it indicates the presence of an animal spirit. Uh, the bear paw is also a symbol of authority and strength and leadership among the clans. Uh, the bear clan in, in the, the bear clan itself is the clan of the medicine people and our healers. So that is the brunt of this beautiful picture and the question that Ryan gave us. And Ryan, I want to thank you again, sweetheart, for your this huge question. You didn't realize what you did, but it really taught us some things about Navajo pottery. And these are, these are not traditional, okay? These pots are already made. They're already fired, I guess. I don't know if you can say fired. They're already created. And then the, you know, now 
people who are potters, I guess you could say, they purchase them pre-made and then they add whatever. It's not like the old days where, and also the reason, Ryan, that I wanted to, you know, what I'm expressing and the definition I gave you and to all who understand pottery, every piece is defined by the person who makes it, okay? It's not that you, this could represent something different to another potter uh, versus what grandma said, and I'm just doing the best that I can to interpret what I think. I'm not being fair to the person really who made this because there could be a whole different mindset of that person so you know these are not simple questions but ryan thank you so much for bringing this up the navajo pottery um was plain plain that's where they talk about hatching you know whenever they fired them there was fired some parts of it were dark and some parts were just the regular earthen colors and they would put just little few designs but it was for use it wasn't for beauty okay so there's a lot to learn about pottery look at how beautiful i hope you can see it so thank you ryan grandma loves you i think it's a curse to try to say okay we're gonna do the live on next friday let me see what happens and you will see in the description box let's say by friday the whole day friday if and then i'm going to put a thumbs up or you know say it's on or no it isn't so that means saturday will probably be involved in the live and i i still want you to those of you who didn't i don't want anybody who already gave the questions uh to rewrite questions okay i need new new blood i need new people who did not ask questions make it simple so that i can have the questions by let's see wednesday the latest because today tomorrow today is saturday sunday you have sunday monday tuesday wednesday you have four days to ask me really simple questions okay that i can answer for you and guess what there will be a surprise so don't forget and i'm going to ask for maybe about oh i think about 20 questions that are very simple mm -hmm. Uh, now, don't say, Grandma, how old are you? That, you'll never know, okay? It, it's bad enough, um, we know. So, but keep it simple and, and things that, you know, you want to learn about the Navajo uh, culture, tradition, uh, things like that. This is it. And here is our wonderful juniper. Oh, and we are here. And these are so beautiful. I just wanted you to see and be out here with Mother Nature. The sun is out. It is just beautiful. Emma's basking in the sun. You're going to see all my fine lines and I'm going to shade my face so you can't. But it's beautiful out here. There's not a cloud in the sky. Juniper trees everywhere. Fresh air and some snow yet but it's absolutely lovely. I love you so. Hagorne.